Welcome to the Let Go and Be Free podcast, a podcast for those who grew up in an alcoholic or dysfunctional family. I'm your host, Ron Vital, author of the Let Go and Be Free 100 Daily Reflections for Adult Children of Alcoholic series. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit letgoandbefree.com. And with that, let's get on with the show. And welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. For this episode, we are going to recommit ourselves and rediscover the 12th and final step of Adult Children of Alcoholics and Dysfunctional Families World Organization's 12 Steps. So what I'm going to do, I am going to read the step. And then we will uh, go through. I have a couple points I want to make about this one. And before I begin, just want to put this into context. Yes, it is the 12th step. Yes, it is the final step. I first learned these steps back in, I think it was like 1993, 94. So we're talking about 30 years ago. And here I am now in 2024, still looking back and reflecting on these steps. I say that because I really believe it is important to put the steps in perspective. This is not something where you memorize the steps, go through them very quickly, and then you're done. I look at it, and this is just my opinion, it is a process It is an ongoing process, like anything in life, that it's a journey. And it is not meant to be like a finish line. This is not something like you get a a certification and you're done and you never have to do this again. Or you get a a degree and you're you're finished. You You go through your four years of school for college and you get your you know, your diploma and, you know, you're done. That That is not how I see the 12 steps. You you could choose to see it that way, but I would, uh, I would say that there is a richness and a wealth of experience around the 12 steps that takes time to be able to learn because we are always changing and growing. We are not the same person that we were yesterday. And for me, when I look back, I am definitely not the same person I was 30 years ago. I'm different. I've learned. I've grown. I have made mistakes. I have done great things. I have done things I regret, etc. The 12 steps for me are a framework. They are something that I look to in times of trouble and in times of happiness, and when my life is going well. I use them as a guide. Um, I use them as a tool to be able to help me employ, uh, employ the skills that I have learned in each of the steps. And I hope that my going through and doing this recommitment process has helped you look at the steps from a different perspective. Even though, like, if you've been following the podcast from day one and, you know, we went through the podcast whenever it was, almost two years ago, still a lot has changed between when I started this podcast nearly three years ago and where we are today. The world has changed. We have changed. So let's start with that and we can go from there. So step 12, let me read this out to you. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps... We tried to carry this message to others who still suffer and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And I'll read that again. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others who still suffer and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So that's a lot to take in. And so, you know, when I look at this step, I do believe that the important thing here is we basically want to share what we've learned with the steps with others. This does not mean 
that I go around with the big I love 12 steps button on my shirt. This does not mean that, you know, I knock on doors and say to hey everybody, hey, I love the 12 steps. That That's not me. And that's not how I go about this uh, process. In fact, most people in my life probably don't even know that, you know, I am a spiritual person, that I follow, you know, the 12 steps. I don't go around talking about, you know, this kind of thing. It's not that I hide from it. It's I, there are certain aspects that I like to have private, um, private in the sense of I don't want to specifically focus on something and make something, um, make other people uncomfortable if, if I'm getting into, you know, discussions about my past, why I follow the 12 steps, etc. If it comes up, I will gladly talk about it, but I don't like to make it an example. And by what I mean by that is, I really do believe in the, you know, show, don't tell. By people, you know, when I interact with people, when they look at me and they see my actions and how I act, what I do, how I spend my time, the things I focus on, that, in my opinion, is how I am living the 12 steps. And I will, you know, step out of this for a moment. It's also how I believe... Um, it's important to share our life values. I don't believe, you know, in, uh, you know, holding a Bible and saying like, I am religious. Look at me. I am so religious. I believe it's more important to say, let me step up and let me help others. And by helping others, that speaks volumes of the type of person we are. When we denigrate others, when we call people names when we try to dehumanize people, and we've seen a lot of that uh, lately. I uh, won't go into specifics, but let's be honest, we've seen a lot of that. I don't believe that uh, that is healthy or helpful in any way. The only thing that does is divide people. And when we divide people, us versus them, it just creates more problems. Because typically what's happening is Someone wants to control others to be able to get their will. And I do not like that. So from my perspective, I'm not going to go around and talk about how great the 12 steps are. Now, if someone is struggling and if someone is looking and comes to me for advice, I will gladly share that. I would much rather through example of how I act, the things that I do, focus on, you know, implying what I've learned through the 12 steps in my relationships, through work, through my volunteer efforts, my friendships, my family, etc. So here I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to tell a quick story. So I was recently watching uh, a YouTube video and there was a woman and she was bemoaning the fact that she had gone out on a date and this guy uh, the person she was on a date with, he just talked about himself like incessantly. And by the end of the date, she realized that he had never asked her any question. She had gone through and asked him many questions. You know, what do you do? What kind of things do you like? What about your family? You know, questions you would ask on a first date. And he answered all those questions. But he didn't ever ask her anything back. And she was saying that she thought that maybe it was her. And she started telling this story to her other friends. And her friends pointed to the fact that, oh, there's a bunch of other women that are out there that are telling the same thing. And they're sharing stories on TikTok and other social media platforms that the dates that they go on, you know, men are telling their stories about who they are by you know answering questions that women are asking of them, but they're never, you know, asking anything back. And they, you know, this woman that was doing the YouTube video, she kind of thought that that was sad and frustrating <clears throat> because she was looking for someone to date that she can have some kind of a bond with. And I, I, you know, I listened to this, you know, video. And I, it, it kind of got me sad because, again, you know, I'm a different aspect of my life. You know, I, 
I haven't been dating since again, it's like almost 30 years now. Um, you know, I've been married, you know, knock on wood, it'll be next year, 25 years. So I'm at a different point in my life. And I'm not saying that <laughs> I have things all figured out. I definitely have a lot to learn when it comes to relationships. I still work on, you know, practicing my skills and learning different aspects of, you know, how to be uh, better in a relationship. The one thing that I thought was missing from the interactions that I heard that this uh, young woman was having with her date and what other young women are having is that the the men that they were with were not listening. They, they were not being active listeners. And I think that is something that is extremely important that I personally think that I have learned, you know, through the 12 steps. It's not all about me. You know, me, 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 me. It's about the interaction and communication, honest, open communication that I have with others. And I think that's missing in our society. So this young woman went on to say that from her perspective, many men are going on these dates. You know, uh, people are finding who they want to date through Tinder and other such apps, which again, seems so foreign to me. That's, you know, I've, I've, it it just seems so strange, but um, they meet through an app and then they meet, you know, eventually in person. And instead of having a two-way communication, it's one way. And this young woman said that many of the uh, the men that, you know, she and other of her friends, you know, have gone out on dates with, their interviews were, uh, their, their uh, dates were almost like interviews, job interviews, that men were trying to impress, were trying to, you know, focus on how great they were, rather than being open and accepting and asking questions. And I, I, again, I thought that that was so sad. And looking at the 12 steps, sure, you know, again, I'll read it again. Having had a spiritual awakening as a, as a result of these steps, try to carry this message to others who still suffer and to practice these principles in all our affairs. I think it's really important that we don't just go around and we're trying to force the 12 steps on someone. We have friends, we have family, we have co-workers. There are times when someone has gone through a rough patch, the, the argument, you know, with a spouse or, you know, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or problems at work or problems with a parent, money problems, all kinds of things. I think, again, within healthy boundaries, it's important that we listen and we ask questions like, oh, I, I hear you, that your your mother is in the hospital. How is she doing? And then listening. Things that I think um, we can do on a very natural process, but often um, many of the conversations that we might have had before following the 12 steps focus on manipulation or control or when we can we get the next word in. When you're having a conversation with someone, as they're talking, you're formulating what you're going to say back to them. That's not effective communication. When we truly stop and listen, that is where we can then form strong, healthy bonds with other people. And I think when we look at the 12 steps, when we look at boundaries, setting boundaries, Where is the healthy place between I'm asking you questions and I am listening and I'm living my entire life through you because I'm codependent? Like, there are extremely different extremes. You know, (laughs) there are from one side of the coin all the way over to the other. Where do we fall in that? And that's where I believe that the 12 steps is a really good guide. We can't solve other people's problems. We can't take them on for them. We can listen. We could provide guidance when asked. We could ask questions. We could provide information and say, oh, well, you know, I started going to these adult children of alcoholic meetings and I found them really helpful in explaining why. We don't have to be overbearing. And so with this 
twelfth and final step. To me, it's the beginning of the journey. It's the beginning of how do we put these steps into practice on a daily basis. That does not mean that we just memorize them and we go, wow, I can spout them off and I know them by heart. It's how do we use a particular step in any circumstance where we might have some challenges? That is what I think is extremely important. It is reflecting going back, looking at various steps over time, over the course of each month of the year, and then each year of a decade, and each decade over the course of our lives. That is what I think is the power you know, of the 12 steps. It's learning healthy communication skills and learning how to regulate and process in a healthy way our emotions, and dealing with past trauma. Like, that's what I see the 12 steps as. You've known from the beginning when I've started this that, again, you could believe in God or you don't have to believe in God, but I still believe the 12 steps are extremely powerful for anyone who wants to stop and to read them and to learn them because, again, they teach us through their words what is healthy a healthy boundary? What isn't? How do we go through and process, you know, a complicated situation by looking back and doing a moral inventory by making amends with people? There's so many really valuable skills that we can learn when we put these steps into process. So for step 12, I do like to focus on some reflection. You know, for example, Here's some ideas that you could use for writing in a journal, or you could just print these out, put them somewhere, um, and use them as a guide through the course of your day or through the course of a week. You know, and my my question here is when we reflect on how we're behaving now, are we better at choosing who we want to develop relationships with? That's a good question. And if we're honest with ourselves, when we look back at our relationship history, doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship or if it's a friendship, what type of relationships are we getting involved in? Who are the type of people that we're being attracted to? Are we being attracted to people who are unhinged and a bit dangerous because we want to save them or we want to rescue them or... We're trying in some sick way to repeat patterns of what happened with our parents and we think that this time we could just fix things and make things right and that little child within us will feel better because in the present we were able to, you know, almost like a wish fulfillment, go back in time and fix the abandonment that happened to us. This is a, it's a good question to ask. It's not one that you might want to um, discuss publicly because you might feel a little embarrassed about this question. Take this privately. Think through that question. Like, who are you choosing to start relationships with? After you've gone through the 12 steps for a while, have you seen a change in that? Next question. Are we more aware and have stopped trying to control others? This is also another difficult question to ask ourselves. Because when we look at it, when we focus on this, are we emotionally trying to manipulate people to get what we want? Do we put up these boundaries around ourselves to protect ourselves, but we use unhealthy coping mechanisms? Do we use denial? Do we freeze people out because we want to get what we want? Do we use sex as withholding because we don't, you know, want someone to get close to us because they did something to us, like in an argument, a disagreement? Like, how are we trying to control and manipulate others? And why? That's a really good question to ask. And again, through the 12 steps, when you reflect on the the skills that we've learned, 
that's a good one to say, hmm, have I stopped doing that? Am I doing it a little less, etc. Next question. Are we focusing more on self-care and are using the skills we learned to help our inner child? This is, I think, extremely important. The 12 steps have taught us how do we handle our feelings? How do we look back at our past? How can we look at a, a, a problem in the present and be able to focus on something that is extremely helpful to us? That's something that we may not have looked at that from that perspective before. We may have thought, well, just going about my day, just trying to survive, trying to get a paycheck, trying to raise the kids, trying to deal with my parents, trying to do this, trying to do that. And we're just floundering around like lost at sea. But when we focus on self-care, making time for ourselves, and some of you might say, I don't have time to do that. Well, then that means you need help. And if you don't have help, how can you get the help that you need so you can carve out some time for self-care? And what does that self-care mean for you? Is it going to a therapist, going to a 12-step meeting, writing in a journal, talking with a, a trusted friend? What does that mean? And how are you making that time for yourself? And the last question Have we stopped looking for acceptance from others and truly love ourselves for who we are? When you look in the mirror now, can you look in the mirror and say, I love myself, all for who I am, the quirks, the good things, all the things I've done, do I love myself? In the beginning, it might be really difficult to do that because you might be embarrassed or ashamed of some of your behavior over the years. But when you're looking and learning about the 12 steps and reflecting on them, again, you're going to learn skills. You're going to be able to practice better communication skills, better self-care skills. And when you put the whole package together, looking through all the 12 steps, focusing on how to really make a difference with yourself each day, that's going to make, over time, a change in how you perceive yourself. Because for once in your life, you're taking care of the hurt that you have from inside and you're looking to solve that instead of trying to solve that from outside influences, getting thrown into infatuation and romantic relationships, thinking that that's going to solve your problem, or constantly working, thinking the work is good and it's going to numb the pain that you feel or using food or alcohol or sex or drugs or whatever it might be to put this veil over you around the world. So that way you think, oh, I don't have to deal with those past icky feelings. There's a lot that we can learn from the 12 steps. And I do think that when we reflect on them and focus on them, not only can we make a big difference in our own lives, but from our examples, when we go through life and we imply those skills that we've learned, the people around us are going to see that we've changed. They're going to see that we've grown. That is how we're going to be able to spread the message of the 12 steps without literally trying to beat somebody over the head or convert somebody. That's not the point of the 12 steps. It's about building boundaries with ourselves and others, having healthy communication and healthy relationships, and finding happiness in your life. So again, this is the end of the journey for us, recommitting ourselves to the 12 steps. I do hope that you have found these episodes helpful, and I do hope that however you decide to go moving forward, that it's going to be something that's going to be healthy and happy for you. As we're getting closer to the end of the year, again, I put my ask out looking for people to join the Substack subscription, become a family member, so you get the extra members-only podcast episode each month and any of the other members-only postings that take place. And again, if you haven't picked up one of the four volumes of the Let Go and Be Free books, please do so. They are a great resource for you. Again, there's each book has over what is a hundred days. So in each day you can get up and you can read, you know, um, one day through the journey of the year. And I've given extra 
So again, if you get all four volumes, there's 365 days, you'll have 400. So over the course of each year, you'd be reading different entries, reflections, at different times. And I think that's really powerful because it gives you a snapshot into your past and how you can use different skills and give you good things to think about the focus on different tools on how to live a healthier and happier life. So again, thank you so much for your time. And as always, please be well.